Okay. Welcome. So if you're joining me right now, say hi and let me know who you are and where you're from. This is kind of a impromptu um, periscope. Actually, hold on, I'm gonna turn on my air conditioner really quick. Hold on. Really hot in here. So give me two seconds to get organized. Okay. So Thank the Lord I have air conditioning. Oh my gosh, it's so warm here and I know so many people right now in Santa Monica are so hot. Hey Lauren, yay! Oh, I'm getting a notification. Awesome, so glad you're here. So, like I was saying, I wanted to do, oh, British Columbia, awesome. I wanted to do an impromptu um, Periscope today because I know it's Sunday night and you know, a lot of times, like I, I, I had you know, lots of clients who had weddings over the weekend or, you know, they're going to cider mills or spending time with their family. They're doing all of these things and they're going out. And then what happens is that we, we, um, you know, maybe overindulge or we go and we have things that, you know, we've been taught are quote unquote bad for us. And so then we start feeling really guilty. And we start feeling like we did something really bad and or we might um, take it a little bit too far and we might overindulge and overeat and then we feel really crappy. Oh, I, I was going to say you can't hear me? Oh, okay. Awesome. Listen later. But everybody else can hear me okay, right? Just let me know if there's uh, how the audio is. Um, but anyways, so, you know, you might have overindulged. You might have maybe... Um, gone out and taken it too far and thought like oh well I'm just gonna like you know go way off the bandwagon here and I'm just gonna overeat because I've already done you know I've already done myself in so I might as well just go crazy and so I wanted to do this periscope today to give you a little bit of reprieve and to kind of um, help yourself to be a little bit easier on yourself and um, just give you some some tips that you can implement starting right now to feel a little bit better. So the first tip I'm going to give you, and by the way, just to introduce myself, my name is Sheila Veers and I'm a health coach and I work with women on breaking free from yo-yo dieting so they can feel amazing in their skin. And I, I really work with women on all topics related to self-sabotage, to um, emotional eating to n nutritional rebalancing. Um, there's lots of different reasons why you know we aren't able to lose weight or to feel our best and so I work with women to figure out what's at the root of that so that we can fix it and create a lifestyle. So hello there. Who is that? I can't see. Awesome. Um, I work with men too sometimes but for the most part I work with women and because you know women have Women have such a different relationship with food than men do. Um, you know, my friend Rob jokes around with me and he says, like, how can I have a relationship with a potato chip? But it's true, you can. Um, so, anyways, today I'm just going to give you a few tips. If you're just joining me now, I'm going to give you a few tips on how to um, reset yourself if you feel like you ate too much this weekend. So give me some hearts if you're excited about that. And then also um, swipe right, I think it's swipe right or up, to share this with your friends so that if there's somebody else out there that's struggling with this too, then hopefully this will give them a little bit of um, reprieve, like I said, just to kind of help them be a little bit easier on themselves. So tip number one uh, for what to do if you ate too much this weekend or just now is to get outside and get some oxygen into your body. And so the way that you do that is by number one, walking. That's a great way to just get your body moving to get some oxygen to your cells because one of the things that people don't realize is that oxygen is actually a really important part of the digestive process. And when your body is getting enough oxygen into the cells, then, um, hold on one second. Okay. Then uh, when your body is getting enough oxygen in it's your cells, then it's able to function optimally. It's able to digest the food properly. It's able to, you know, pull out the nutrients that it needs, assimilate those nutrients, get those nutrients into your cells, and then release whatever food, you know, your body doesn't need. So that's great, right? And that helps us to not um, store fat. So 
the first part is get outside, get in some walking if you can. Just, you know, get outside, move, breathe. That's the whole point is I want you breathing deeply because when you're breathing deeply, it's getting the oxygen in. If you're not able to go take a walk, um, the other thing you can do is to just do some cobra stretches on the floor. Um, so if you're into yoga, you'll know what cobra stretches are. Um, if you don't, just Google it and you can find some images or some videos that will help you and that will really um, help you to like get things moving, like get things, get digestion going. And again, you're breathing deeply while you're doing this. And so getting that oxygen into the cells of your body is a great thing. So that's tip number one. Go for a walk or do some cobra stretches so that you are breathing deeply. Tip number two is to assess the situation and to ask yourself, like, what's going on really? Because it's not really about the food. When we find ourselves overeating, when we find ourselves having a binge, um, usually there's something deeper going on. Usually what that means is that in some other area of your life, you're feeling a little bit out of control. You're feeling like, you know, whether you're feeling insecure, you're feeling like you need to get away or escape. Like a lot of times the reason why we go overboard when it comes to food is because we're looking to numb out, we're looking to, to comfort ourselves. And food is a really easy thing for us to turn to when we want to do that. So give me some hearts if you feel like that's something that you've ever um, done, where you know you find yourself in a situation where you're like stressed out and you feel like, man, I'm just go, go, go. And then all of a sudden you have this time where you're going out and you're having fun and you just go crazy. You go overboard. And sometimes we do that with alcohol. Sometimes we do that with food. Sometimes we do that with shopping. People use all kinds of different things in order to numb themselves. But for a lot of people, especially women, food is really easy to do that with. It doesn't talk back. It's always available. You know, we're, we're blessed to be in a place where for the most part, um, for the most part, we have access to food pretty much all the time. So it's easy, you know, it's an easy thing to reach for. So I want you to check in with yourself. And if this is something that happens to you often, um, you know, try to look deeper. And that's the work that I do with women. Um, in my, my program Immersion, uh, Rock Your Dream Body Immersion, we dive deep into that stuff. We look at what's the core of what's going on here. Like what areas of life aren't working right now and how can you work to mend those areas, heal those old wounds, to bring more excitement into your life, to bring more ease into your life so that you don't turn to food. It's like once you work out, hi Jet Set Life, hey guys, glad you joined me. Um, yeah, I'm glad. So this is something that it's very different that, you know, we're talking about like emotions when we're talking about food. It's not something that's really talked about very often, but when you think about it, if you heal the stuff that's going down, like the root stuff that's going on down under the surface, then a lot of the stuff up above, like the kinks just work themselves out. You know, then, you know, you stop even thinking about food because you're so excited about your life that you're so busy that you, it's not even something that even occurs to you. So um, that's number two is to really assess the situation. Think about like what is the cause of this? Like, you know, why are you turning to food for comfort? Why are you feeling like you need to numb out? And what other areas of life need some attention? So then finally, number three from my my three simple tips on what to do if you ate too much is to ask yourself and be very honest with yourself. Thanks so much guys for sharing this. Awesome. Uh, to ask yourself if you are properly nourishing your body. And so here's the thing, like over time what happens for many of us is that we get so disconnected from our own body because we are focusing on what everybody else is telling us to do that we get very disconnected from our intuition. And so what happens is our body's trying to give us signals all the time, all day long, that we need to take care of it. You know, like, hey, hey, it's like trying to get your attention in any way it can. And those signals will get louder and louder and louder until you finally listen. And that's where dis-ease comes from. You know, when we ignore the signals of our body, for too long, then it gets so loud that we have no other choice than to slow down. You know, we get sick, we have to sleep. We get some big thing, some big health problem happens, we have to stop forcing our body 
you know, and really pushing it beyond what it can handle. Do you guys, I mean, can you relate? Give me some hearts as if this is something that you can relate to. And, you know, we all do it. We're in this society of just go, go, go all the time. And we, we just sort of take our bodies for granted. And we just think that, you know, there's always more to do on our to-do list. So we have to get all of that shit done. And so what I want you to start paying attention to is number three is to start asking yourself, like, number one, am I fueling my body? Am I nourishing my body with the nutrients and the vitamins that it needs to thrive? And if you think about it, if you're not nourishing your body, if you're depriving it, if you've been in a deficit for a really long time, meaning like if you've been on a diet for a really long time, then your body is going to rebel. Your body is going to create cravings. Your body is going to make it very hard for you to continue to um, starve it if it's very hungry and it needs those nutrients. You know, it's like you need your brain to function. You need nutrients. You need carbs. You need sugar. Like sugar is not bad. You know, you just want to be, you want to be fueling your body with the nutrients and the vitamins that it needs. And when you're doing that, then a lot of times overeating kind of doesn't happen anymore because your body feels supported. So, you know, um, if you've been in a deficit for a really long time, or if you find that you've been yo-yo dieting a lot, where it's like you try to cut, 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 and then all of a sudden you binge any time that you're in an environment where you have access to other foods, then I encourage you to start um, looking into ways to start supporting yourself better. You know, and, and one thing you can do in order to do that is to start supplementing, you know, using vitamins, using um, protein shakes or meal replacements. If that's something that, like, your, your schedule is so jam-packed that you just honestly don't have time to plan and prep meals on Sundays or whatever, any night of the week, then do what you can to make it extremely convenient for yourself. Um, because that's, like, that's the root of what your, your body needs nutrients. So... Either if you're not going to give your body the nutrients, it's going to cause you to binge and you're going to end up getting them anyway. Or you can sort of like be preemptive about it and plan ahead in a way that you're be you're being very realistic about what your current situation is so that like ultimately you're getting to that end goal of like nourishing your body, taking really good care of it and, and allowing your body to feel safe so that it can release the excess weight, release the excess fat or water or whatever else that it's hanging on to so that ultimately you get to where you want to be and you feel the way you want to feel and your body's happy too. So, and if that's something you need help with, that's something that I can help you with as well because I work with people on nutritional rebalancing. I work with them on really figuring out how to plug in taking really good care of yourself, both mentally and physically, in this super fast paced environment that we live in. So that's my Periscope for today. Do you guys have any specific questions when it comes to overeating, nourishing your body? I know I saw a bunch of little things pop up but I was really trying to stay in my flow so that I wouldn't like lose track because it's hard when you're trying to read and talk at the same time. So if there's anything specific you guys have questions about, let me know and I can cover that in more detail. Did anyone feel like they, you know, had struggled with this this weekend? Did anyone have a an, an time where, you know, they did overeat or felt themselves, you know, like feeling deprived? Can you relate to what I was talking about today? Give me some hearts at least if you guys are, if I'm on point with what you're feeling. So if you overeat, should you just jump back on your normal plan the next day? Yeah, like, so that's the thing. That's where yo-yo dieting starts is that... Like when you feel like, oh shit, I really screwed up. Yeah, I just ate a cupcake. You know what? That's okay. And and just think about it like this. Like, okay, I just ate a cupcake. You know what? My body knows what to do. Like my body actually is an amazing machine. And so, you know, what is it? Oh, or your next meal. Yeah, so my body is an amazing machine. It really can function optimally. It knows what to do and it can get nutrients out of pretty much anything. Obviously we want to set it up with the you know nutrients in the most bioavailable way we can so it's getting everything that it needs. But if you eat a cupcake, your body's going to use that sugar. So go tomorrow and get a great workout in and think about it like that. Like, okay, I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to have the most amazing workout tomorrow because I'm going to have all of this energy. And don't tell yourself, you know, sugar is bad because ultimately it's really not like you know, as long as we are in check with like this idea of moderation and whatever moderation means for you as an individual, ultimately 
we can have these different treats. We can, you know, have a cupcake here and there, but you know what's actually far worse than the actual cupcake for us is the mind games that we play with ourselves afterwards. You know, because if you feel really guilty, if you feel shame, if you feel like, oh my God, I just screwed up, then what happens is you actually put your body in a stress response. Anytime we're feeling any sort of negative emotion, it actually has a physical response, um, a physiological effect on our body. So, and just to kind of make this like a short description, there's two branches of the central nervous system. There's the parasympathetic and the sympathetic. So the sympathetic, you think sympathetic S equals stress, the sympathetic branch is where we go into flight or fight mode. That's when our body feels um, stress out, it feels like it's in danger. And when your body feels unsafe and it's focused on survival, then it shuts off all of the fun functions that have nothing to do with survival. So it's, it shuts off digestion, it shuts off metabolism, because obviously your body's like, I don't freaking care about that, I just want to survive. So when you're stressed out, either mentally, physically, whatever, and, and that can be about what you just ate, that can be about a conversation you just had with your spouse, that can be about anything. If you're in that stressed out state, your body is not going to be able to, um, to function optimally and digest whatever you have eaten properly. Now, if you're in that relaxed state, the parasympathetic response, if that's switched on, um, then the, the stressed out state is switched off. If you're in that relaxed state, that's the tender befriend state. That's when all of your systems are talking, they're functioning optimally, and when your body's relaxed, then your body feels safe to be able to do what it needs to do. It doesn't feel like, oh, I need to hang on to anything. It just feels good. You know, it's sort of like at that homeostasis. So when you think about it like that, anytime you have a situation where you feel like in the past you would have felt guilty, you would have felt shame, that's that's sort of like your motive. That's what you tell yourself. Like, you know what? Whatever. I made that decision. Onward. You know, I'm going to take action. I'm going to analyze it. Is there anything that I can learn from this for the future? And then next time you can make adjustments. But right now, all that really matters is that you let go of whatever you just did and you move forward and you focus on something else that feels really good. And, you know, whether that's like, you know what? I take really good care of myself all the time. If I eat a cupcake once in a while, it's A-OK. -okay. Or if you tell yourself, I'm gonna have a great workout tomorrow because of this cupcake, or if you tell yourself my body's an amazing machine and it knows exactly what to do with these nutrients and it's gonna release whatever it doesn't need, whatever you need to do to keep yourself in that relaxed state, or even distract yourself by something else, like you know, playing with your family, going for a walk, doing anything like that that will help you to just stay in that more appreciative, um, relaxed state will be optimal. Thank you. Can you see them? been working them out. You know what, they're actually, I measured them the other day, they've gotten bigger, which I was surprised. I haven't measured them in a while. So, so is improper nourishment what causes cravings? Well, it can be a combination of lots of different things. Like that's what we kind of talked about today. It can be your body craving nutrients. It can be you being stressed out all of the time and you're looking for some sort of comfort. And, um, Food is easy to turn to for comfort, so that's what we were talking about earlier, that, you know, it's always available, it's all, always around, it doesn't judge, judge us, you know, it's very easy. So food is what we tend to turn to. And also, another piece of that is that food equals love, and we learn that from when we're very little, that we have this relationship with our mother or whoever was feeding us when we're in an infant, that we receive love while we're being fed. And so that's another piece of the equation that sometimes if you're feeling unloved, like if you're not showing yourself love, if you're not taking good care of yourself, then we turn to food to find that quick comfort. We turn to food to fill that void from within that really is not about food, it's about a craving for more love. So if you start giving yourself more love, then sometimes it can take care of the, you know, it can work the kinks out of these things where, you know, we're not really craving the food. Like if you fill yourself up with love, if you take care of yourself, if you do whatever that thing is that really lights you up or makes you feel loved, then, you know, you stop craving food. It doesn't, it doesn't even occur to you. You're not thinking about, you know, macaroni and cheese or whatever that food is that, you know, is your comfort food. Does that make sense? I'm trying to fit some pretty big concepts in here, but, you know, I feel like if you guys at least get the gist of this stuff, then maybe you'll remember it when this stuff pops up and then you're like, oh, I don't want to do what I always used to do. I don't want to beat myself up. I don't want to, okay, good, glad. Yeah, so any other questions? 
Do you have any tips for reducing evening snacking? Well, so that's, again, is another, that's a really good question. Um, a lot of times the reason why we snack more in the evening is because uh, it's later in the evening and we have less sort of like what most people would call willpower. Um, we kind of run out of that energy, you know, that we have in the earlier parts of the day, the focus, and we kind of are pretty much zapped. Like we're in that place where we're very depleted. So it's harder for us to not give in when we have those sorts of cravings for comfort. So what I would suggest is that you start to think about, you know, how can I nourish myself earlier in the day so that once I get to the end of the day, I don't feel so depleted. So for you, that might be, you know, drinking more water, having uh, more meals and or larger meals earlier in the day so that once you get to the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal. Also, um, distracting yourself, like getting outside for a walk, that's one of the best ways actually um, like after dinner, if you feel like you tend to, a lot of people, like once they start eating dinner, like uh, this is like sort of the normal thing is people will go all day with barely eating anything. Like they'll go through work, they skip lunch, they're, they're go, 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 they skip breakfast or they eat just whatever, vending machine, anything. And then they get home and they're so depleted, they're so just exhausted emotionally that that's when they start to turn to food. So then that's when they eat dinner and then they want to keep eating. So if you can break that um, cycle and you can plug something else in. So say you have dinner and then you get outside for a walk. It's really, you know, it's beautiful outside right now. It's fall time, the, you know, seasons are changing. Get outside and appreciate this amazing weather that, you know, we're having that, you know, with, go for a walk with a friend, talk about things, talk about inspiring things. Don't talk about negative things. Don't complain. Don't like be, you know, like try to up each other on who had the worst day. Focus on celebrating life and talking about five things that you appreciate or, you know, just do something to sort of shift your state versus like st sitting there on the couch watching TV, focusing on how much you want popcorn or chips or whatever dessert. Um, you know, try to do something else. Or the other thing that you can do is to plug in a healthier version. So for me, uh, one of the things that I teach my clients is to have your three non-negotiables. So for what that means is like for me, I like coffee every day. Like coffee, I don't even really do it for the caffeine. I love the ritual of it. I love the way it smells. I love the whole part of that being like part of my morning. So um, that's one of my non-negotiables. I have coffee every day. Now I used to have a latte every day, but I have changed it up and now I have like an Americano with some almond milk and stevia. So you can plug in different things that are still very satisfying, but maybe aren't as like calorically um, hi, you know what I mean? So instead of a latte, I'm having an Americano, which is basically coffee with a little bit of almond milk, and I'm still very satisfied by that. So for you, maybe if your thing is having some big dessert or cookies or a big bowl of chips, you know, maybe you can plug in something else that's like, um, you know, like popcorn that you made yourself and you know it's like air popped and you added whatever like great seasonings on top so it's just as satisfying and crunchy and you use you know Celtic sea salt so it's really healthy for your you and your body's getting those minerals that it needs because Celtic sea salt is so good. Um, another thing you can do is add in like a, a healthy shake that's full of different nutri nutrition and you know that's like a really great way to have a dessert that is fueling your body. So hopefully that gives you some good tips. Did you say apples? I missed that, Kim. When did you say apples and cinnamon? This time of year, apples and cinnamon are good. I like honey crisps. That's what I miss from Michigan. I uh, I used to love apples and cinnamon. Yeah, yeah, cinnamon actually. Cinnamon, I don't know if it's an appetite suppressant, but it's, uh, it's a, it increases your metabolism. It's supposed to be really good for metabolism. But I like apples and cinnamon. I sometimes will do apple cinnamon and yogurt too. I like Greek yogurt. All right. Any other questions? Any last minute things? Otherwise, I'll wrap it up. But hopefully that was really helpful. And let me know. Oh, yeah, Kathy Savage. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds like a Kathy Savage tip. 
um, let me know. Uh, head over to Facebook and leave me a comment on my page. Um, it's Sheila J. Veers on Facebook if you search for me. And let me know any topics that you guys want me to cover on Periscope. I'm going to start doing these more often um, because I know these are things that, you know, I want to, I have all these ideas and Periscope is so great for just like turning on the camera and just talking about it. So, um, yes, oh my god, I love Halo Top ice cream. It's so good. It really is one of my favorites. Um, but I'm going to be doing these more often. And if you want more tips like this, make sure to head over to my website. It's Sheila Veers. It's S-H-E-I-L-A uh, Veers, V-I-E-R-S dot com. I'm like trying to think through it. SheilaVeers.com forward slash free gift and you'll get my um, special gift that I give out to people who are struggling with this kind of stuff, that want some tips, that really want to understand how to stop yo-yo dieting, how to stop self-sabotaging. And this is just such a topic that I feel like is so important for women especially. Thanks, Kim. Yes, that's exactly it. For women to know that like it's not about restriction. It's not about deprivation. It's not about the next like four week, six week diet that you need to like, you know, force your body to do to ultimately give you this body that you want to maintain forever, but it's just not realistic. If you set yourself up to create a lifestyle, something that you're going to stick to for the long term, it's not about, you know, depriving or taking anything out, but adding things in, adding in nutrients, adding in more fun, adding in all of these different things that make your life more meaningful and fulfilling and satisfying then you're naturally going to feel better. You're naturally going to take better care of yourself and everything just sort of works together to give you the results that you want. So I will see you guys soon. Have a great week and hopefully this was really helpful. Uh, take care. Bye.